welcome to the Bashara School at Chisholm Institute. We're going to have a three-day symposium here um, entitled Self-Knowledge and Global Responsibility. The underlying question of this symposium is, can I see myself and the world as one self? We are not after here answers. We're trying to find out whether all these diverse fields have a kind of essential connection, that connection being found in ourselves. I don't have any fixed idea of what could come from this symposium, but what I do know is that anything that might come from this symposium will come from a kind of vision. We're talking about self-knowledge leading to self-awareness in the instant and how that affects our work on the global scene. A master peace builder is someone who has this exact quality of self-awareness in what they do. Um, someone is, who is so highly tuned to what's going on inside and outside that they can respond very quickly to the needs of the moment. I thought the opening session this morning was uh, very inspiring, particularly the way in which uh, so many people who hadn't been engaged in these ideas before just seemed to really open up and say what they thought. And uh, hopefully that's a tribute to the openness of the environment we're going to find here. The territory for Indigenous people is a supermarket, a chemist, a DIY store, a history book, like ev absolutely everything. But as I said, to divide it up like this doesn't make any sense. And if you remove any one element from it, the whole thing can collapse. Territory is much, much more than the sum of its parts. OK, well, we're at the top of Chapel Hill, and we've all come up here as a group to get an all-round view of an extraordinary world that we're part of. And we're just enjoying this beautiful panorama. Whichever way you face, you see the face of reality. It's just extraordinary. individually have to decide on what the individual issues and examples you select are, what you invest in, what you invest your energy in, not just your money. You all know that. Everybody knows that at some level. And if you had had an ounce of gold when Christ was crucified and you'd invested it at 2% a year compound, that would now be a ball of gold the size of this planet. Is this sustainable? Before coming here, I was spent a few days in London, and I did meet bankers. I, that's why my, my the question I wanted to throw in in the forum is: is has has um, the crisis been has it been deep enough? Not yet. Not Long yet. enough Not yet. To, to, to change mindset. Not I I didn't get a sense of any change or remorse or anything. They were just like, I survived, yes. I didn't get fired. Yeah. And it's like, okay, the next, the next deal. I don't think we're taking the opportunity to make deep fundamental changes. The question I'm thinking about is, what is this I? Uh, and the answer that came to me when I asked myself that question is that it is it is nothing but the process of uh, clinging now to this, now to that, liking this, not liking that. And we can see that this habitual tendency to relate to the world in a self-referential way and in reference to our own uh, emotional experience 
uh, can be weakened and that a more objective and other focused mode of attention can be uh, developed. One of the good ideas that's come roaring out of science over the last, well, it was there with Darwin and other people picked up on it immediately, is that nature is also extremely cooperative. And Darwin saw that it was cooperative, but it kind of worried him. And, Dar and Dawkins sort of sees that it's cooperative, how could you fail? But he explains it in terms of the selfish gene. It looks cooperative, but deep down it's just genes fighting their own corner. I don't think I care about this. The point is that li life as a whole is seriously cooperative. And in fact, it is far more cooperative than it was, than it is competitive. And if it were not so, it would fall apart. And if you look at the whole human body, trillions of cells working in harmony, it is a master class in cooperation. And what it is really is the universe over time, over many, many, and huge time. The universe becomes itself, is the idea I rather like, over time. And human beings are very much part of this universe. And the, the existence of a human being is part of the evolution of the whole universe. And as people have been saying, how you behave determines, helps to determine how the universe itself becomes. Nature had been working extremely hard, according to this perspective, for many millions of years, working towards a form, a natural form, which was capable of embodying its own origin. So everything is to be found in this total place of manifestation that we call, uh, that we call the human being. But it's there in potential only. potential of the human nature to be both totally the interior and totally the exterior and at the same time the point of in between which is neither and it's not an either or it's a both at the same time. This is going to be pizza bread for the buffet tonight. 150 people. I'll divide this into 14 pieces. Ibn Arabi likens man to the, the point of the eye pupil, which is a mediation, mediates between inside and outside. Nothing more, but everything. Because it's because of this that vision is, is possible. may look very black ahead and, and there may be tragic times ahead but we've had a glimpse into the human spirit and into the joy and the beauty and the love which, which is there and I leave this place with, with joy.
Don't 